thank you so much. I see Uncle Carl there. I see you. I see you. Good to see you. I don't know if you can hear me. Carl, you on mute or something? He's on mute. He's on mute. Unmute yourself, Carl. Do you see how old is Carl now? He <laughs> right on my heel. Hello. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I was saying Hello. I see you, Uncle Carl. Good to see you. Hey, my brother. How you doing, man? Good to talk to um, you. Good, good to thank you guys. This, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys look amazing for 23. Look, uh, thank you. Young. Tell you something, y'all better be glad my stuff ain't on mute because I would never figure it out. (laughs) 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 Guys, thank you so much. This is uh, a UK first uh, to get you guys, um, all the members of Commission. I'm excited because I I grew up, well, I didn't grow up on you guys. I telling Carl that um, the first track that I heard was uh, Everlasting God. That was a track that got me saved. I thought you guys were, do you remember the group today? Yeah. R&B group today, yeah. Big Bub. Oh, yeah. I remember them. Yeah. Big Bub. I thought, I thought that Bub. you I thought, yeah, I thought they'd gone gospel. So oh, wow. They've gone gospel. This yeah, is a good track. Man, but that Bub. was the truth. Yeah, that's yeah. My, that's what the mother now. Yeah, he's good. He's good dude. So again, thank you guys. Um, it's been a weird time in, in this situation. It's been really, really weird. Um, with obviously COVID nineteen happening. What have you guys been up to during this time? How's ministry been for for most of your guys? Wow, <laughs> ministry's great, man. You know, we're still doing. We're doing live stream. Um, we also started back having service, man. You know, we installed a couple of air purifiers that purify about 2,000 square feet per machine. We got two of them. And so we haven't had any cases, new cases of any COVID stuff at the church. So we almost back to full strength, man, because um, we got those, we got those uh, things happening. Ministry is good, man. Ministry is good. Folks are coming out. There's some people wearing their masks. <clears throat> they social distance, but you know, we've been doing well, man. We've been, we've been fortunate here in Detroit, man. We're doing well. Well, and, and- in Texas, it ain't that kind of party. You know, in Texas, uh, where I pastor, we're still um, still doing virtual. Uh, what we decided to do, though, however, is we're totally, completely revamping how we actually do church, um, really trying to make sure that we make it, you know, a little bit more, um, for the sake of a better word, uh, visually uh, acceptable. Um, we're planning on opening up in August or maybe late August, early September, um, because there's still a major spike here in in the in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and uh, so we're just you know, we're proceeding with caution, but still staying in faith. Okay, how about you? Uh, can I call you Pastor Keith? Uh, sure, you can. <laughs> oh, you I'm froze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I thought that was the reaction from calling him pasty. Just, <laughs> uh, hey, am I on? Yeah, you on now? Yeah. Hey, hey. So yeah, with me here in Orlando, just been enjoying quarantine pretty much, and uh, watching online. Uh, of course, not traveling, but uh, been uh, able to do. Uh, several reco- uh, studio work and things like that on projects. And just enough to to remind, you know, I do sing, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> is that right? You got to be kidding me. <laughs> we just saw that. <laughs> He sings because he's happy. Yeah. And he and sings. sings. He's holding that note right now, too. That note, he's holding that note. <laughs> His eyes are he's frozen. He's... And I know <laughs> he's watching. <laughs> Mike, 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 don't be coughing on this live now. Don't be coughing on this live now. Shut this thing down. I cut, I cut it off. Click. And this is the ultimate social distancing. Yes. <laughs> Coffee on the line. 
What about you, Minister Mike? Oh, I'm quarantined. Um, I know I'm living and I'm in Michigan with Carl, but we we kind of look got a little spikes here and there. But um, um, I'm in the process of relocating, and I'm heading to Atlanta, Georgia. But because of the spiking in COVID, stuff, we keep delaying, and you know. But that's kind of good though, because we still get my house in order. So he's in his quarantine pose. <laughs> Along with <laughs> oh, no. oh, so, Fred. Uh yeah, we're just I'm I'm between here and uh, my office, you know, and um, that's it. We order food. We don't I haven't been out to a restaurant and since this thing shut down. Uh, watch online. As a matter of fact, I've been doing streaming services online for churches. Uh, record them and send them out. Um, and we're just staying busy. You know, at the warehouse, we take temperatures when people walk through the door. You know, do the best we can. You know, no and no more walk-ups. You know, people just kind of, hey, man, I came out to check you out. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> Here, let me put this on your head and keep that mask on your mouth and here's another one. I don't know where you've been or what you've been doing. Who you've been talking to. But no, it's, um, you know, it's amazing because you know what it is? None of us would ever thought that, that this was even possible in our lifetime. And yet, if you look at each and every one of us, Marvin may be a little less than everybody else, but the rest of us, every day the provision is there. You just go to the cupboard and the provision is just there. Marvin has provision stored up for a long time. <laughs> so he's he good. That's he not true. He don't know what other people <laughs> don't don't know know what no. deal with. No, 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 no. Wake up, go to bed, and you know you you go to bed and you like you say, that was good. Was good. <laughs> <laughs> wake up in the morning. And, Ooh, thank you, Lord. And where, where, Lord where is he staying? Where, where, is, where are you staying, Pastor Bob, uh, Bobby? Bishop Bishop, where are you staying? Down the street from Provision Corner, Fred. <laughs> I don't stay that far from him. I stay down the street from Fred Heaven. We all stay around the same area. No, but I mean, like it's it's it has been really it has been a real adjustment. I mean, for for everyone that's involved, because strangely enough, man, you know, to go from you know traveling, preaching, and singing, and doing concerts to everything stopping. I mean, I mean, completely stopping. I mean, and if, if you didn't plan, you know, for a rainy day, you know, I know artists that call me on a consistent basis and they've asked, you know, for help or they've asked for, you know, money or whatever they've asked for. And sadly, you know, you don't even know where to point. It. You know, I, you know, being a pastor, of course, I know how to tell people to go to the different you know, places within the community where they can get help and resources or even, you know, go about filling out what they have in the United States, like PPE loans and things of that nature that we have access to. But, you know, for many, if they don't have their stuff set up as an authentic, real business, yeah. it's impossible for them to be able to retrieve and or receive yeah, those types of funds. So, you know, this season, for the most part, for, I believe, for, for like artists across the nation, should have been a time of real planning, forecasting, um, reinventing. That's one thing I bless God about Fred. Fred, Fred has cornered the market on reinventing himself as it pertains to still being able to successfully navigate in this 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 social media uh, world, where he is still able to do concerts and still able to connect with audiences where most artists can't and haven't. So, I mean, I think that if anybody wants to look at a model of how to do it. You know, they need to look at Fred Hammond because Fred, mm -hmm. I mean, Fred working. Now, don't get it twisted. Fred is actually working, even though he's not leaving home. Mm -hmm. He has actually successfully figured out how to do this 
and to do it, you know, to a whole nother level. I pastor a church, so my, you know, my focus is really just trying to, you know, engage, keep the people connected. My church has grown, you know, amazingly uh, during this season of, 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 of COVID, just simply because we understood uh, the social media and that whole virtual space. And if, and if you can understand it and really, really learn how to navigate in it, uh -huh, I mean, yeah. it's going to be extremely <clears throat> successful. And uh, because, you know, all churches right now are storefronts. Mm. Um, everybody has the same, you know, platform. Whenever we go up, we're all speaking to thousands upon thousands of people. And what yeah. we need to learn how to do is, is like, you know, in this season, if, if you don't have the, the camera capabilities, you got cash app. Yeah. Just go up and start singing. And, you know, do or go up and start preaching because that's what people are doing in this season. Um, black Lives Matter. I mean, we see over here that a lot of black people, black men, are being killed by the police. What, what, what? And I asked uh, Minister Carl about this. What, what is? The, what should the church do about this situation? Because it keeps happening, and it's happening and happening. What, what, what should the church do about this situation? Can I? Let me say this right quick. Um, one of the things that I'm sure of is that. Uh, I agree with this, is that we have to first determine and make a distinction between Black Lives Matter, the statement, and Black right. Lives Matter, the mm -hmm. movement. Right. right. Black right. Lives Matter, BLM was not Black Lives Matter at first. It was something else. And when the term started coming up because of all of the killing, they changed their name to Black Lives Matter, which confuses the issue. What Black Lives Matter should be said, and more churches are starting to say it now, understanding to separate themselves from the movement to the statement, which is statement. Black Lives Matter 2, T-O-O. -O. And a lot of people go into the thing of semantics, which is, which I believe is just shows who's fake and who's not when they say all lives matter. Well, we know that, but all lives matter can't until people who have the power who stand up and say it's wrong to do this my issue with some of the evangelical churches is simply this they can run behind that black lives matter and all lives matter and say that but what they're really talking about is they are not just pro-life they're pro-birth it's a difference they don't mind the the child being born but they don't speak up and they'll rally and they'll speak up and they'll, they'll carry picket signs and they'll go in front of it and they, they, they stop there. The reality is simple. But when the person is 16, 17, 18, 20, 20, and 30, it they get matter. quiet. And right. all of a sudden, pro-life does not matter. They don't march, they don't talk, they don't do this, they don't say nothing. They just get quiet when they can go and say, change the laws. Don't use a chokehold. Change the laws. We, we are, we're pro-life. And pro-life means pro-life all the way through, not this other stuff. So churches are starting, a lot of the, the, the African-American black churches here are starting to speak up and rally out. I'm with Bishop Jakes. And although we don't scream and wear Black Lives Matter t-shirts because we know that it can be confusing, we yeah. do believe, and, and churches should even get stronger, but we believe that you have to make laws that outlaw what we saw with George Floyd. Yeah. Whether he had, if he stuck the store up, you still shouldn't put your neck, once you got him subdued, he's down. I am a military trained policeman. I went to the military for six years. I was trained in Fort McClellan, Alabama as an MP. And we had laws that if you hit, if you pulled your weapon when they pulled out a knife, you got put on trial. If you fired your weapon when they pulled out a knife, you better pull out that billy club and you better not hit them under the arm, under the right arm. You better not hit them behind their leg. If you hit them wrong and they die, you're going to Leavenworth. We told the line. That's why you don't hear about a bunch of military police killings mm -hmm. because you get in question. 
And until they put that law over here and say, here's what it is. Police jobs are hard, but there still should be rules. And it should apply for black people and white people. If you will spare a, a white person and they taking your car and taking your gun, taking your taser and you won't do nothing to them, then the same thing needs to happen over here. But it's, it's, got, it's starting to change now because of George Floyd, unfortunately. And I've seen a lot of churches get involved. And that's my piece. Let me let me add to Fred because I, I have to definitely go. But I, you know, I'm I'm a very strong believer that all lives absolutely matter, but all lives won't matter until Black lives do. That that that's the statement that each and every individual needs to understand. You know, we hear this statement, and it's coined in the United States: "Black on Black crime." Mm-hmm. Well, there's white on white crime, but you never hear that statement. You Which uh, is higher on Hispanic crime, but you never hear that statement. Hey, Marvin, it, yeah, white on white crime is higher. It is much black higher. Black crime. It is it's much higher. It's much higher yeah, because yeah. they got more to steal from each other than we do. Yeah. But <laughs> the reality and, and is, people people tend <laughs> people people tend to people tend to murder who they're in proximity to. Absolutely, That's just the bottom line. That's what but, it is. But but it's it's a coined phrase. Honestly, and, and we and I'm, and I'm I'm a strong believer in this. And I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say, and then I definitely have to go. I, I do I believe that the crimes that are being committed in the urban community, black or brown, are horrific, absolutely. But at the same token, that has nothing to do with the systemic racism and all of the other things that we are experiencing in the urban community. If you look in the United States, we, we are literally the smallest, almost the smallest population of those in the United States, but we have the highest incarcerate, incarceration rate in the country. It's in the because, world. In the, in world, the world. Because prisons are for-profit businesses right. in the That's United right. States. Uh-huh. So there are things that we need to look at and things that need to change. I, I'm, I, I tell people this, I, I'll tell you, I'm on the national board for the National Black Action Network. I, I work with, on a consistent basis, uh, the Reverend Al Sharpton. Mm. And I tell people all the time that if we can't change the law, the law. let's change the lawmakers. Because that's the only way that we're going to be able to see the change that we want to experience. So the same way that we're trying to do it here, in the United States is the same way that we would be trying to do it across the world. In positions of parliament, as well as in positions of the United States government, if they won't change the laws, we need to come together and change the lawmakers because it's about all lives mattering. But if there are individuals who are not equal, and or experiencing equitable experiences in life, it's not never going to be the even playing field. We don't want to be equal. We want equality and equity. Equity. That means that we want to be at the same level of you financially and at the same level as you as an individual of color. If we can't have those two things, you're telling me that we don't matter.